G'day, Professor Glenmo here. I'm gonna tell you a bit about microgrids. What we got behind us is an island of microgrid system here at the Smart Energy Lab. What's a microgrid? Effectively, it's a grid that other systems can connect to. So here at the Smart Energy Lab, we've got seven homes and about six labs all connected to a three-phase microgrid. And this is it right behind me. This is a cell electronic power chain. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of inverters. So two per phase, and it's a three phase microgrid. And there's a battery pack as well. The battery pack is from Power Plus Energy. This is an 80 kilowatt stack of their batteries. It's uh, um, quite a big system uh, for a single installation, but for a microgrid, you actually need a lot of storage. So uh, the lesson with microgrids is you need to size the grid forming system to cope with the maximum demand when there is no other sources available or you have a backup generator system, which we do. We've got a 22 kV generator here as a backup solution. But how do all the other systems synchronize with the microgrid? Now, that's where the clever thing comes in. It's called ASNZS4777 Part 2. Now, that's the standard for grid-connected inverter systems. And what do you know? Out of the box, without any configuration, they have to do what's called frequency power reduction. That means as the frequency climbs, their output power reduces. So, these clever inverters here from Selectronic, they actually lift the frequency when they need less power from other sources, such as conventional grid tie inverters or hybrid systems that are also connected on one or more phases on the microgrid. So it's kind of magic really, but you do have some limitations. And one of those is capacity. You can't have an infinite amount of source power controlled by a finite amount of microgrid grid forming system. So that depends on the manufacturer. But, you know, um, we're really pushing the boundaries here uh, at the Smart Energy Lab. And when you push the boundaries, sometimes things break. So we're up to about 140 kilowatts of connected solar. And uh, that's through multiple systems, something like 28 inverter systems scattered around um, the area on this microgrid, connected to what's effectively only a 30 kilowatt system. Now, that is not that big. This is 30 kilowatts of grid forming. So how does it absorb 140 kilowatts? It doesn't. It has to stop it. It has to make it ramp down. But fortunately, most of it is controlled by MOD. Modbus is controlled by comms. So we've got a Select Sun, well, we've got four of them actually, 420 kilowatt Select Suns, which are Modbus controlled by these electronic inverters because they're they're basically a Selectronic solution for direct management of solar. So the remaining solar, which is scattered across all the homes and labs here at the Smart Energy Lab, rely on that frequency shift power control. And sometimes it doesn't ramp fast enough down and what do you know, boom, we exceed the battery voltage. But there's something special about these batteries. They look after themselves. If they see a high voltage spike on any of the cells, they'll shut down. Now, that's a bit of a oops moment, but on a microgrid, it doesn't mean the homes lose power, it just means that the grid's gone, and these homes all have hybrid systems on them. So, you've got to size your sources to consider your grid forming system first, how big it's going to be, and whether it can absorb and control the amount of uh, connected generation. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Professor Glemo. Over and out.